What's up, comic book fans? And welcome to Comics Icons. Now, JJ, what they call me. And today, we got the first issue of a new five part miniseries by Chris Claremont called Wolverine Madripoor Knights. And this story is a follow up story almost a quarter century in the making. Released back in 1990, also by Chris Claremont, the classic hit Uncanny X Men number 268 gave us the first meeting between Captain America and Wolverine in Madripoor. This story featured these two legends coming together to save a young Natasha Romanoff as a child from the hand and Baron Strucker back in 1941 during World War II, who were attempting to recruit young Romanoff to the hand as their next master assassin. And if you're not familiar with this story, I recommend picking up a copy to better understand this current day follow up. But this story featured a few time jumps between both 1941 and 1990. And in 1990, we saw an adult Natasha Romanoff, now as the Black Widow, back in Madripoor on a solo surveillance mission for Nick Fury. But when Black Widow became overwhelmed when fighting the hand, Wolverine showed back up this time with Psylocke and Jubilee, and they rescued her. See, Black Widow had previously thought that she and Daredevil had gotten rid of the hand, but found out that the Strucker twins, AKA Fenris, were in Madripoor to meet with Matsuo Suriaba, the leader of the hand. But as the group of heroes stopped what appeared to be decoys, they were never able to catch up with Fenris and Suriaba, and fans were kind of left wondering what the actual meeting with this unholy alliance was all about. Now, in Wolverine's 50th anniversary, we finally get the rest of this classic story continued. So if you guys are ready to find out what happens when Wolverine, Black Widow, and Captain America team up again, then you know what time it is. Let's get it. So we pick this issue up with Wolverine, Psylocke, Jubilee, and Black Widow, and it's three days after the events of Uncanny X-Men number 268, and these guys decide to celebrate what they deem a win, although I personally wouldn't call stopping decoys a win, but nevertheless, these guys decide to go out and celebrate anyway at the swankiest spot in Madripoor. But before these guys can enjoy their evening, Captain America comes bursting through the window while fighting against the hand. So of course now the scrap is on and Wolverine and crew, they jump in to back up Cap. But this is when it's revealed that Wolverine's healing factor isn't working and he's dying. Then we also find out that Psylocke's telepathy doesn't work against the hand because they've somehow built up an immunity to it. And Psylocke finds out the hard way when her mind tricks don't work and she's in turn knocked through a window and into the dining room of this lavish tower. The rest of our heroes join in and take the fight down there with her. Although now Psylocke, she's got her hands on a pair of blades, which she's very proficient with. Now Jubilee, her powers aren't very effective because she's gotten a little bit tapped out from overuse. And now she isn't as useful in this fight. So Logan's first instinct is to make sure she's protected. But Psylocke promises to watch her back. Then we see a twist on the popular fastball special made famous by Wolverine and Colossus when Logan throws a guy at Natasha calling it a sidebar special which she redirects to Cap who then smacks this guy with his shield. Meanwhile, Logan cuts through the rest of these guys and just when it all seems over with, like clockwork, more of the hands ninjas show up. But then a group of armored female warriors show up called the Bakai and they take over this fight while simultaneously pulling the heroes out of it. Then we meet one of the Bakai warriors named Sabrina, who has a prior relationship with Logan, and the two of them exchange some hugs. Then she tells them that she's in need of their help. And of course, chivalrous as always, Captain America steps up to offer it to her, but she lets Cap know that it's not his help that she's after. So after using her telepathy, Psylocke determines that it's her help that Sabrina is after. She also senses that Sabrina is scared and insists that Logan agree to help. So of course, Logan agrees and makes Psylocke promise to keep Jubilee safe, which she does. 
as does Sabrina. But Jubilee isn't very happy about this. She feels that Wolverine always needs her to save him. And as she's escorted away by Psylocke and Sabrina, she has some choice words for old Logan. Words that make Cap blush. While Natasha, she seems quite impressed. <laughs> Natasha also notices that Wolverine is still bleeding and not healing. Then as Cap notices that the sound of the fighting seems to have stopped, Logan assures him that that means the Bakai won. Because otherwise, the Hand would be out there fighting them and they'd be fighting for their lives. Then Cap tells Logan and Natasha the reason that he's there in the first place. That there's a crisis for all of them. That the bad guys are after a piece of ultra secret, possibly extraterrestrial military tech that's going up for auction there in Madripoor. Then Cap tells Logan that while he was on the case, he found out that Logan was there in town and he was hoping Logan would consider teaming up with him. He knows that Logan knows the turf and the players, so he could really use his help. Then Cap reminds Logan of their first meeting together in Madripoor, that they worked well together and those were good days. But Logan can tell how much Cap needs his help and decides to toy with Cap a little bit. Reminding Cap that he told him back then when they met that he didn't need a sidekick, all while smiling at Natasha. So now Cap starts to get a little bit frustrated when Natasha finally jumps in and lets Cap know that Logan is screwing with him. Why else do you think Logan just sent Jubilee away with Betsy and the Bakai? She says to him. So now like a kid on Christmas morning, Cap gets excited. And Logan then asks him, what's their next move? And that, my friends, is the end of the issue. So what did you guys think of this issue? I thought it was cool to finish up with the previous unfinished story and to get another team up with Wolverine, Cap, and Black Widow. It's kind of crazy that we're just now finally getting a conclusion to this story almost 25 years later. And I hope that it ends with a bang. Between this story and the Sabretooth War, Wolverine is having one hell of a 50th anniversary, and I wonder what happens next for the guy. I also like how this issue still maintains the classic art style similar to Uncanny X-Men 268, although with some slight upgrades. But I'd be interested in hearing you guys' thoughts on this issue, and if you guys like this video and this channel, then you can be a tremendous help to the future of this channel by dropping a like, share, and subscribing to Comics Icons for more icons in the comic book world. And also, I've mentioned it in a previous video, but I've been thinking about starting a membership for this channel where I can go live for the members only and we could do a weekly review of these issues and have community discussions on all things comics like past comics that you like videos for and upcoming issues and channel plans plus you guys can have your name shouted out in each of these videos so you guys let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in but ladies and gentlemen it's about that time i'm out peace